Again, this word says for itself what it is. To destabilize all the relations, all the accepted institutions and organizations in the country of your enemy. How you do it? You don't have to send up a battalion of KGB agents to blow up bridges. No. You let them do it themselves. The society at large becomes more and more antagonistic between individuals, between groups of individuals, and the society at large. The media puts himself in the opposition to the society in general, at large. Separate, alienated. Okay? On that stage, you remember I was talking uh, a couple of hours ago about the sleepers. That's when the students from, say, United States, if they are trained in, in Lumumba University, or developing nations, that's the students I was dealing with, are being sent back from the Soviet Union here. Or if they were already in the United States, in the country, which is an object of, of subversion, they spring to action. The sleepers go up. They slept for 15 to 20 years. Now they become leaders of groups, preachers, uh, I don't know, public, public figures. Prominently they act, in, they actively include themselves in a political process. All of a sudden we see a homosexual. Fifteen years ago he did his dirty job and nobody cared. Now he makes it a political issue. It's a, a political issue. He demands recognition, respect, human rights, and Hiral is a ra large group of people. And there are violent clashes between him and police, his group, and, and ordinary people. No matter what, it's black against white, yellows against green, doesn't matter where the division line goes. As long as this group come into antagonistic clash, sometimes militantly, sometimes with firearms, that is destabilization process. The sleepers, many of whom are simply KGB agents, become leaders of the process of destabilization. Doesn't mean that Comrade Andropov sends Comrade Ivanov to the United States. The person who takes care is already here. He's a respected citizen of the United States. Sometimes he, he gets money from various foundations for, for his legitimate uh, struggle for I don't know, human rights, women rights, kid lib, prison lib, whatever. There are sympathetic Americans who donate their money to him. As public and political outrage over Louis Jolyon West's proposed Violence Research Center peaked in 1974, events began occurring that alarmed California's white middle class in which not so, incidentally, might well have kindled public demand for such facilities. Some of the most widely publicized of these events were crimes conducted by the Symbionese Liberation Army, known as the SLA, who rose to notoriety when they kidnapped Patricia Hearst, daughter of wealthy establishment media mogul Randolph Hearst of the Hearst newspaper chain. The revolutionary activities, ladies and gentlemen, of the SLA held many Californians in a constant state of fear throughout the period from 4 February 1974, the date of Patty Hearst's kidnap, to 18th September 1975, the date of her arrest. First, the SLA murdered a popular school headmaster in Oakland and warned of a coming racial war between blacks and whites. Then the previously respectable Patty Hearst became a participant in their urban guerrilla warfare, which included such acts as armed bank robbery. Remember Charles Manson? What was he preaching? There's going to be a war between blacks and whites. Now tonight I hear between whites and Jews, between Christians and Jews, between blacks and Jews. What's the matter with you people? Meanwhile, the public were fed speculative articles by the media suggesting that the Marxist Symbionese Liberation Army 
must have been brainwashing, first into participating in such antisocial acts. With the memory of the gruesome Manson murders, also replete with brainwashing and race war claims, still strong in the public mind, and Manson came out of the California prison system, overseen by Ronald Reagan, the one you all love so much. The effect of the message being broadcast was loud and clear. If you got mixed up with a cult who practiced brainwashing, it might be you who could be enticed into participating in antisocial acts. On the 17th of May, 1974, the Los Angeles Police Department surrounded the Symbionese Liberation Army's headquarters located in a small bungalow on the south side of the city. And although there were known to be only six individuals inside, only six shades of Waco, the Los Angeles PD brought in 150 police officers, 100 Federal Bureau of Investigation agents, 100 sheriff's officers, around 15 highway patrolmen, and 25 motorcycle officers to control traffic. Six people in that bungalow. This must have been the biggest collection of pussies in the history of the world. Television news crews and their cameras arrive, set up their live network feeds, and then bang in the middle of the prime time dinner hour on a Friday night, around 5,000 rounds of ammunition from uh, automatic rifles, pistols and machine guns, as well as tear gas grenades and a barrage of noise from the police megaphones put an end to this black Marxist terrorist left-wing brainwashing threat to democracy. The operation was labeled by the establishment media as the greatest single shootout in Los Angeles history. And the public were led to believe that they had just been saved from one of the most threatening, subversive political cults America had ever seen. And how did they put an end to these people? Why, they burned them to death. Burned them to death. Sound familiar? It's good. A perpetual state of fear over the threat of lone gunmen, rioting blacks, Jews, terrorists, political activists, and manic cult figureheads, and make them demand tough new laws and government initiatives to bring such antisocial elements under control. What you heard last night, what you're hearing tonight, is what you are subject to all the time. Control, manipulation, mind control, propaganda. Pit you against each other.